Thank you, Mr. President. It is no secret that the United States Senate doesn't do much around here except for confirming judges. But looking at the records of the folks we're confirming to that federal bench, it is clear that we've forgotten even how to do that. The Founding Fathers were incredibly visionary. And when they set up the federal judiciary, they hoped to insulate it from political influence. How? By giving them lifetime appointments with the advice and consent of the Senate. In doing so, they gave the senators the most solemn of responsibilities that we have in this body, evaluating judicial nominees on their independence, their fairness, their temperament, and their judgment. Unfortunately, these days, the Republican majority seems to have thrown uh, qualifications out the window. Instead, they give lifetime appointments to the court out like candy. This doesn't prevent partisanship from influencing our judicial system. It ensures partisanship. And the latest example is Lawrence Van Dyke's nomination to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Montana. Now, Mr. Van Dyke is a familiar face to Montanans because he grew up and attended school in the great state of Montana. He also served as Montana's Solicitor General before resigning to, uh, to run an unsuccessful race for the, Supreme, for the Supreme Court, the state Supreme Court. Now, Montanans can separate the wheat from the chaff pretty well, and after examining his record and his judgment, they found Mr. Van Dyke unqualified to serve on the state's highest court. Montanans rejected him overwhelmingly at the ballot box, but now the majority leader wants to give him a lifetime seat on the bench. So once you start to dig into Mr. Van Dyke's extreme record, it's not hard to see why folks in my state were concerned about his ability to be fair and independent. This is a man who believes that government should insert itself between a man and her, or a woman and her doctor when she's trying to make private health care decisions. It is, he is a man, as Montana Solicitor General, who worked to oppose same-sex marriage and questioned the ability of same-sex partners to property to raise children. This is a man who supports opening our public lands to mining and drilling. By the way, our public lands contribute more than $7 billion to our economy. Nonetheless, open it up, drill it, and mine it. And this is a man who ridiculed Montana's deep belief that corporations are not people. He argued in favor of unchecked money flowing into our elections. He believed that corporations were people. And in fact, his race for Supreme Court in Montana received over $600,000 in outside spending, $170,000 from the Koch brothers alone. My guess is that some of my friends on the other side of the aisle view Mr. Van Dyke's extreme positions as an asset, not an issue. They may point to the fact that he claimed he would be objective during his confirmation hearing. The fact is we cannot trust Mr. Van Dyke to put aside his past positions to give everyone that comes before his court a fair shake, to be fair and impartial. Now, Mr. Van Dyke has never been a judge, and he was rated as not qualified by the nonpartisan, nonpolitical American Bar Association. By the way, this isn't the first nominee that's come up that has been rated as non-qualified. I asked a lawyer friend of mine what that means, and he said, basically, if you can't achieve a qualified rating by the American Bar Association, you're a train wreck. That's what Mr. Van Dyke is. His nomination is opposed by over 200 conservation, education, civil rights, and other organizations. He is also opposed by six former Montana Supreme Court justices, folks that Montanans did elect to sit on the highest court in our state. They wrote of Mr. Van Dyke, it is doubtful that he understands that judicial decisions must be based solely on the facts of the case and on the law. We strongly believe that Mr. Van Dyke has demonstrated that he has neither the qualifications nor the temperament to serve as a federal court of appeals judge. His co-workers from his time as Montana Solicitor General seem to agree. A former assistant attorney general who worked with Van Dyke wrote privately to his colleagues, ever since he has arrived, Mr. Van Dyke has been arrogant and disrespectful to others, both in and outside this office. He avoids work. He does not have the skills to perform nor the desire to learn how to perform the work of a lawyer. Now that he has resigned, and that was when he resigned to run for the Supreme Court, he refuses to work on cases assigned to him 
while remaining on the payroll for the next several months. In fact, even Mr. Van Dyke doesn't consider himself qualified to perform the basic duties of a lawyer. lawyer. He once explained in an email that he has no experience in discovery, experts, stipulations, or in meeting and conferring with opposing counsel. Now, I'm no lawyer, but those sound like the tasks that someone up for a lifetime judicial appointment should know how to do. Let me put it this way. If I was looking for a contractor to do work on my farm and the contractor had these kind of qualifications, I would not hire him for one minute, much less give him a job for a lifetime. I spend more time in Washington, D.C. than I like, which is how I know that there is no shortage of lawyers around here and around the country. There is absolutely no reason we can't find someone better suited to this position than Lawrence Van Dyke. I know it's too much to hope that the Senate will act with as much common sense as the folks in Montana do, but I do expect us to have the decency to respect the will of Montana voters and reject Mr. Van Dyke from the seat on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. I urge my colleagues to take a look at the record, to take a look at what he's done, to know that it will not be a fair and impartial court if he's put on it. And I urge my colleagues to oppose his nomination. I yield the floor.